I've been using Tailwind for a while, mostly with Laravel projects, but I'm as a new developer um, and really a full-time marketer before developer, I, I'm still trying to figure out how do I just build a basic landing page that I can put up on Netlify or Vercel or really any hosting platform uh, with Tailwind and specifically these new marketing sections in Tailwind UI. We have all these great components and even full landing page examples that look incredible, but you know, how, if I wanted to use this and just put up a landing page today, how do I do it? I got on the phone with Adam Wavin and he walked me through it and I'm going to now relay that information to you hopefully in a way that works for everybody. And I wanted to go beyond just linking to the to Tailwind via their CDN because you're missing out on the tooling required to use some of these landing page templates. For example, we're going to have to extend Tailwind config.js with some new attributes here, some color and some plugins. And, you know, as soon as you go beyond vanilla Tailwind, you can't just link to this anymore. So I've seen a lot of folks kind of start there and they can get started really quick, but how do you move beyond that? Actually get something that is uh, generating the CSS and then even the JavaScript you might need to build stuff like this. So let's get started. What Adam recommended I use is something called Vite. Uh, it's French for fast. It's a project by view, and we're going to click get started. So let's just start by copying this. Let's go into the command line here, and I'm just going to go into my code projects directory. This is all of my, my code projects, and I'm going to paste this in. It's going to ask for the project name, and it's going to create a directory based on this name. So I'm going to call this craft and we can select any of the templates, but we just want the vanilla template. So I could mouse, uh, not mouse, I could use the arrow keys to go up and down, but I'm just going to choose vanilla. Okay, so now it's done. We're gonna go CD craft. They've got the instructions right here. Uh, now I'm going to go NPM install and it's going to install Vite and then we want to npm run dev. All right, so now I should be able to um, take this. I can even, Adam showed me this, I can hit command and then I can hit command and then click this and it'll load the browser window. So local 3001 is what we want. I'm just gonna put that here actually. So now I've got a, a local server running with Vite. So that was pretty quick, okay? All right, so I'm just going to hit Control C, kill that process, and now I'm going to open up my code editor in this directory. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I think I can just go code space dot, and it'll open up this directory here. So you can see we already have an index file that Vite has generated, um, node modules, main.js, package.json, it's all here. Uh, it's already been generated. And this is stuff that you would have to manually create. This is often what happens when you do the Tailwind in installation. It's expecting package.json to be already there. So if you don't have it, um, you'll get a bunch of errors. And uh, this is nice because Vite just generates it for you. All right, so now we're going to install Tailwind. So I'm just on the Tailwind docs, install Tailwind via NPM. So I'm gonna copy this. Um, the only thing I would say to do differently here, which is kind of specific to Vite. So open the terminal and paste that in. And at the end, do space dash dash save dash dev. Yeah, that's gonna save it as dev dependencies instead of regular dependencies, which just means that um, like Vite is gonna try to put any real dependencies into the JavaScript file that is like served to your visitors. Not that you actually might not even have a JavaScript file ultimately, but anything that's just used for building the site, they want you to put in 
dev dependencies. So that's what that does. Dash dash save dash dev to the end of this. And that's going to install Tailwind. No errors, which is great. All right, the next step after npm install Tailwind is we want to create the configuration file. So I'm going to copy this, npx Tailwind init. Yeah. So now if you run npx space Tailwind CSS space init, yeah, you know, space dash P to make a post CSS config file at the same time. This should get us pretty close to where we need to be to be done. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now that we created these two files. Um, so if you look at post CSS .config .js, like that's kind of got post CSS or tailwind and auto prefix are set up for you. Beauty. And then this is like your tailwind config file, right? So you kind of, you kind of already <laughs> around in here, I'm sure enough yeah. in the past to kind of know your way around. All right, so now in our code editor, we're going to configure a few things. Uh, the first thing is it's generate, if we go to the index file, we can see it is calling main.js. Um, we might use this later, but for now, we're just going to delete all this stuff. We, we don't need this for our Tailwind project, so I'm gonna save that. If we go into style.css, we're gonna be adding our own uh, Tailwind stuff in here so i'm going to delete what's in there what Vite generated automatically and uh go back to the tailwind configuration and you can see include tailwind in your css so we need to add these at tailwind directives so we're just going to copy these bring them over to style.css and save that now we're going to head over to the index file and link to that that uh, CSS file. So link and then slash style.css. There it is. Save that. Okay, and so now we're going, let's test and see if Tailwind is actually running. So inside this div, I'm going to add uh, h1 with some Tailwind classes on it, text 5xl, and hey, is this working. Save that. Head over to our web server here. Oh, I need to run it again. So let's go back here. Let's um, npm run dev. There we go. And if we refresh this, it should be working. Hey, is this working? Yeah, looks like we've got a Tailwind class on there. So that's great. All right, so now that we know Tailwind is working, we can go to the Tailwind UI components and actually try to insert that into our HTML file. So let's go back here. We're gonna go into Tailwind UI. Uh, remember, you need to have a paid license to do this, so make sure you <laughs> buy a license. Uh, also, this is going to require some JavaScript, which we'll add later. But if we go to code view here, this is the code we're going to be grabbing. So I'm just going to click the copy button, head back here, and I'm going to replace this div here. So let's paste that in, scroll to the top again, and uh, we will we'll deal with this later. But we should be able to save this and then see if it's working. So let's go here. And we already have uh, the Tailwind website working. Now, there's a few things that don't quite look right yet that we're going to need to, to fix up. But overall, the basic structure is there, right? All right, so let's head back to our code editor. The next step is we're going to need to install these plugins. So there's a form plugin that needs to be installed and a Tailwind aspect ratio plugin. So back in the command line, we're going to kill that process there and npm install at Tailwind CSS forms and at Tailwind CSS aspect ratio. And then we're gonna use that same 
dash dash save dash dev. Is that all correct? Okay, so those plugins are installed. Okay, so now that's installed, we're going to grab these plugins here and we're going to open up our Tailwind config.js and we need to add these to the plugins section here. Go back to index and this is of course what they're asking us to do here. We're also going to grab these colors. So under extend theme, yeah, right there. We're going to add those. Um, oh, looks like I need a closing bracket. And the last thing is this right here. So we're going to copy this and we're going to put that right at the top. All right. So if this is working, we should have something that looks a lot better now. Let's uh, let's give that a look. Uh, oh, let's first npm run dev. Okay, and let's open up our server here, and this is looking a lot better now. Now everything is aligned the way it should be. Everything looks perfect. And we can see if we're getting any console errors here, but I don't think we are. Yeah, everything looks great. So, wonderful. The one thing that doesn't work though is if we bring this into mobile mode, that hamburger menu is already expanded. It's not, you know, it's supposed to look like if we go back here, if we go back to the landing page example, and can I scroll this like that? Yeah. So if you've got a hamburger menu like this, uh, we don't have that yet. And for that, we're going to need to add some JavaScript. To do this JavaScript work, Adam recommended we use Alpine, which is a really lightweight framework. So Alpine JS. And we're just going to use their CDN. So let's take a look here. And, uh, I believe this is the one here. Well, we're actually going to grab this here. All right, so back into the code editor. And if we go into our index file, we can remove this now. This has all been copied over. Actually, let's uh, tab this over. So up here in the head, we're going to add a link to the Alpine JS file on their CDN. And now we're going to write some JavaScript to essentially uh, perform this function where we can open and close the hamburger menu. So I'm just going to open up Adam's code here so I can copy it on the header class right up here. We're going to add x data equals curly bracket menu open false. Then down here on the button, we are going to add a click event. So at click equals menu open equals true. Then we're going to scroll way down here to this div here and we're going to add x show equals menu open and then on this button down here we're going to add add click equals menu open equals false and i believe this should work let's uh let's give it a go here so let's make sure our server's running here. Uh, yep, so it's server's running. So let's go over here, open that up. And if we minimize this, looks minimized the way it's supposed to be. If we click on it, it opens up. If we click the X, it closes. So the last thing we need to do is to configure this purge CSS stuff. So if I, so if I go npm run build, 
it's giving me a warning that we are not purging unused styles. And so if we look at these, if we look at this CSS file we're getting, it's, it's massive. Um, so we're going to need to uh, fix that with purge CSS. So back in the code editor, we're going to go to Tailwind config and here in this purge section, and we're going to go index.html because that's the, the file we want to purge there. And so now if we go back and let's run the build again. And so that, C, that generated CSS file is a lot smaller now, 19 kilobytes versus 3,585 kilobytes. And this is all generated in this dist folder for distribution. So we have index and then in assets, we have our, C, our generated CSS and our generated JavaScript. So that's all right there. And this is what we are going to be distributing to Netlify. All right, so the final step is we want to get this into GitHub and then have connect GitHub and Netlify. So every time we deploy changes to master, it automatically updates our static site on Netlify. So first let's get this into GitHub. Uh, I'm going to create a repository for craft, which is the, the directory we've been using. I need to click create and I'm going to publish this. This is just using the GitHub desktop app. So now we're publishing all of that to GitHub. And then in Netlify, we're going to click new site from Git. Authorize through GitHub, and we can search for that repo. There it is right there. And then in the Netlify settings, we only need two things. The first is that build command we've been using all along, right? So npm run build. We're going to have Netlify run that. And we want the directory to be dist which is what we saw here. This whole folder that Vite generates is what we want the static assets to be served from on Netlify. All right, so we should be able to click deploy site and have this work. Let's uh, take a look here. We can actually see what it's doing by clicking through here. So far, so good. All right, so now it's running the build, npm run build. And that's doing similar to what we saw locally, right? 19 kilobytes for the CSS file. It's deploying it and the deploy is complete. So now we should be able to, if we just go back here, here is our temporary URL. And if we click on this, there is our Netlify static site using Tailwind CSS and Tailwind UI components. And now every time I make changes locally, deploy them to GitHub and see if it automatically updates our Netlify site. So I'm gonna save that. Go to GitHub. These are our changes. So I'm just going to commit those, push. And if we head over to Netlify, we should see a deploy triggered here. There it is, it's building. So we can take a look at this. It's gonna run through those build steps again. So yeah, every time we deploy to master, Netlify will recognize that there's been a change and it will rebuild the site. There we go, site is live. And if I refresh this, my changes are now live on the web. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, if it has, reach out to me on Twitter. I'm M-I-Justin there. I run a podcast hosting company 
with my friend John Buddha. And uh, if you are in the market for podcasting, please consider us. That's transistor.fm. And uh, many thanks to Adam Wavin for <laughs> jumping on a call with me and walking me through all of this. Uh, definitely go check out tailwindcss.com and go and buy tailwindui.com. If you have any other questions or comments, leave those down below.